All right, everybody. So I got another, another thing for you. Another thing. What is that called? Oh yeah, that's right. Blade. Got another blade for you. <laughs> Not just any other blade. This blade kind of caught my attention. So, uh, being that um, it was at a decent price point, I went ahead and picked one up because, well, you know, it's from Dagger Knives. So let's talk blades, everybody. That's what we're into today. Not just your normal dagger style knife. No, no, no. This model is the Ronin from Dagger Knives. I haven't seen too many um, reviews on this. I did see one that was in uh, Russian. <laughs> so that was actually kind of cool. There was, I guess, I don't know if it was the owner of Dagger Knives or whatever. I couldn't really understand what was going on in the video. <clears throat> um, but they had two different kinds. They had one like this and then they had another one uh, all black all blacked out well here it comes in the box right here uh, of course you get your it's a magnetic closure box if that matters to you you got the red font right there that's kind of a mirror polished red font and uh, you get your knife in this plastic bag thing right here and uh, you got that foam insert. So if you care about keeping this box, you can. And of course, if you guys want to support Dagger Knives, do their Instagram and all that other information right there. So, Or you can simply just type it into Google and pop up. You can also uh, go to Blade HQ. My, my mind just kind of spaced there. Sorry about that. My, uh, my brain isn't working too well right now so yeah you can go to blade hq that's where i got this 67 bucks i believe that's not too bad um being a collector that i am uh this caught my attention for a number of reasons really um so here it is with the uh skull pocket clip that they're deep carry screaming skull pocket clip that they are known for really really cool um but for some weird reason i don't know why uh, you know what? i'll get into that in a minute uh let's just I'm going to give you my overall, before I get into the specs and all that, overall feel for this knife. And um, I just hit my tripod. <laughs> Cannot believe I just did that. Uh, this is a longer knife, bro. Longer knife. All right. Without damaging the tip, I really hope I didn't just damage the tip doing that. Oh, man. I am really off today. Forgive me. No, it's fine. All right, so overall, this is a very big knife. Um, it's over three and a half inches, so you're looking at uh, 3.8, I think it's listed as. So damn near close to four inches, um, if that's what you're into. And if you're into Tonto-type blades, this will do you one pretty good. Now, uh, the reason why I chose this knife is because it kind of reminds me, borderline kind of reminds me of a cold steel. Um... I don't have that knife with me right now, though I probably should have. Their old, old, old Voyager Tonto. Uh, that's what this kind of reminds me of. Because um, the square tip is very prominent right there. So you got that uh, reinforced tip is what I like to recognize it as because it's not coming to a, a complete point. It uh, kind of has that squared off so you have less likely to snap the tip on there unless you're actually using the very very tip of this then you know you still run a chance of snapping it if you're not careful but it is to, uh, blade steel of d2 and uh, that's really cool it is a stone washed kind of appearance on there so that's really nice that is a really really nice finish they champered the spine and jimped the very base right here so that way you have good grip as you're holding it feels good and it's nice and rounded off in this area right here so it's it's a really nice neat look it's very clean it's very nicely done um so you got uh two different grinds on here so you got one grind here and then the other grind right here so that isn't just a line that is actually the profile of the blade is changed closer to the tip to resemble that Tonto. So that's really nice. That's really, really nice. Um, another thing that I really like, yeah, it's liner lock. Not a lot of people will enjoy that it's liner lock, but it is a flipper, and the flipper is nice and jimped on there. I really like that it catches really well, and it opens very smooth running on the ball bearings that they have going on in the pivot, which is really nice. 
Centering is really good. And it is really, it's just a very clean knife. It's very, it's done very well. You got the uh, lanyard kind of uh, half hole thing going on right there. So it's not too ugly. Um, it's fine, it works. And uh, the way that this thing looks is exactly how it feels as well. Uh, you feel that the, uh, the grind point on this they they ground down part of the handle so aesthetically it's really nice and it does provide it does have grip but it's not overly overly grippy and it is even on both sides okay you just can't see it because of the, the pocket clip but it's ground down and it's actually a really 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 handsome kind of look right there so that's really nice of course, it's all, uh, you know, Torx construction screw, so you got these little areas right here that have the Torx screws in it. And, uh, yeah, steel liners. Um, now, one curious thing that I've never really cared too much for, and it seems to work okay with this, is uh, the glass breaker. So you got a tungsten carbide tip. At least I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Um, most the ones that I'm familiar with have a tungsten carbide when you see that little ball right there that's darker. Uh, I used to think that that was hematite or hematite. It's not. It's actually a tungsten. So that's really cool. At least that's all I'm hoping it is. I'm pretty sure it is. It's not a little steel ball. And then uh, the pocket clip is, I believe it's reversible. You can reverse it. So if it doesn't bother you because there's no specific tool for this, this this uh, glass breaker, what you would have to do is take uh, pliers to it in order to undo it. But it seems to be pretty tight where it is. So you can switch it around, I'm sure, if you really wanted to. Because as far as I can tell, I had to move that out of the camera because the blade is, is, is pretty decent. You can see right down in there, if you look, trying to get it in the light, you can see that the screw is from this so yeah you can but if they put any type of thread locker in there it's probably going to be a little bit of a of a pain to undo but it is doable i'm assuming because it is pretty tight it's not loose usually when i get a knife that has a screw top glass breaker deep carry pocket clip it usually means that this is pretty loose and um, this is pretty tight so it's on there pretty well um, they did do some uh, milling on the inside of the handle scales for weight reduction. Let me bust out the... There it is, flashlight. So you can see that they milled out the handle scale on the show side and on the locking side. A little bit down here, which is pretty nice. And yes, you can see the screw top there it is for the glass breaker so that's nice that's really nice as simple as this knife is and it's very very just straightforward you know dagger design which i really do like they're they're very straightforward kind of has that emerson kind of feel to it because emerson makes knives that aren't meant to be pretty they're meant to be used and uh, dagger knives coming from russia it's like it's borderline the same thing. It's made to be functional and usable, and it's not made to necessarily be pretty, but at the same time, they've executed this knife to be very attractive. Uh, at least to me, anyways. I think it's very attractive. They did a really, 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 very, very, really, I put those words together, really. All right. That's, that's, wow. All right. I must be really tired. They did a really good job on this knife. Um, you can feel the grind pattern on the handle, the difference between the rough side and the smooth side. So it kind of tapers down. It's kind of wide up here. And then it tapers down. If you can see that, it's interesting. Another thing that um, Dagger Knife seems to... I guess my only little gripe is that their pocket clips are kind of funky from time to time. And uh, as you can see with this pocket clip, it looks a little bit uneven again. Uh, but that's okay. Like I said, as long as it works, it works. And it seems to be on there pretty nicely. And um, 
It just seems like this side's higher than this side. That could be because of the handle being what it is, um, the way that they ground it down, which is fine. Uh, but also what's really weird, kind of bothers me, is the fact that the uh, pocket clip is at an angle. You can see that every way that I can put the knife, the pocket clip is facing more towards there. So I don't know. I mean, it seems like they did that on purpose to keep the eyes lined up right here, to keep the eye bones lined up. <laughs> with the handle um if this was more f more this way if this was this way a little bit i'm pretty sure this would be sticking out a little bit more so i think they did that they executed that pretty nicely um like i said the only thing that bothers me a little bit is how this side is a little bit shorter maybe it's just an, an illusion because of the handle scales being ground down but either way it works just seems you know i don't know um but I've had nothing but great experience through their company with them sending me spare or extra parts to repair uh, the scratched blade. And they even sent me chocolate that I gave to my little sister. I mean, straight from Russia. Come on, that's pretty dope. And a few stickers, which I am actually looking at right now that are on my knife locker right now. So that's really cool. Um, I can't complain too much about this company. This company is, has done really good with their customer service. And... Uh, they release some really interesting stuff. That is a great knife. I really do like that. I dig that very much. So it's kind of a throwback, but also it just works. D2 steel, that's going to be tough stuff. So let's go ahead and get into the specs of the knife. And then I'll give you my overall thoughts uh, at the very end, obviously. I'll bust out the scale here see how much this weighs and it comes in just under five ounces at 4.06 so that is that's really good that is a win so it does have a little bit of weight but it works it works very well go ahead and get into the length okay so i want to say that's damn near four inches right there I mean, if you look at it, it's literally from tip to the handle exactly four inches. But I think the cutting edge is what they're really counting on right now. So the cutting edge does look a little bit longer. That's fine. It's practically a four-inch knife. It's okay. So you're looking at it overall just a smidge over, I want to say, nine and one-eighths. But I think I'm being a little bit too generous. So nine, yeah, I want to say about nine, nine inches. Of course, handle length while it's in your paquito is going to be close to five inches. I want to say about five inches if you're including the, uh, the glass breaker right there. But without that, you're looking at three, uh, four and three fourths. Excuse me. That's not bad. Not bad at all. All right. So we'll go ahead and get into the blade width of the. Uh oh. Oh, it died on me, finally. Wow. Well, can't do my calipers. This thing was working fine. I don't understand. What the heck? Man, I'm having problems. Having issues in this video, huh? Alright, well. Sorry about that. I guess I can't use my calipers. My battery's dead. It's weird. Anyways, decent knife. Um, I can't say anything bad about this knife, to be honest with you, other than the pocket clip seeming just a little bit off, but it seems to work just fine. Um, I'm only hoping, because if you're looking at it from this angle, yeah, it seems to be all right. It's just, you know, the handle scales kind of make it a little bit weird. Not bad. I haven't used glass. I'm not, uh, and to be honest with you, I'm not really a huge fan of glass breakers. Um, I just don't really see <laughs> the point of having a glass breaker. Unless you're an emergency response kind of, you know, if that's your profession, if you're that kind of person, then a glass breaker, you know, seatbelt cutter, I think all that stuff is important to have on you, uh, especially if you're like a firefighter or something, or even just like law enforcement, anything 
with flashy lights, <laughs> I think is uh, good to have this kind of stuff. Uh, if you're just a regular civilian, I think the glass breaker is a little bit overkill. Um, unless you're out there, you know, cracking open glass of whatever portions that you're trying to use on your EDC. Uh, or unless you're driving your car off cliffs into, um, you know, bodies of water and you expect not to be able to get out of your car, then I guess glass breaker is useful. Assuming that you're able to actually function while being in that situation. You know, just because it's been done in the movies doesn't exactly 100% mean that you can actually do it without the proper training. Um, anyways... <laughs> glass breakers i just think that they're a little bit weird to have on a knife but that's just you know from a civilian standpoint um i just don't really see the reason of having a glass breaker you know it's not if you if you barely use your knife <laughs> as it is and you're just cutting open letters and boxes and then more than likely 99 percent, i would have to say or 95 percent, give a little uh, you might probably never really use glass breaker unless you're actually physically breaking glass just for the hell of it. <laughs> but an emergency, hey, the glass breaker would work, right? Not could be, you know, something that could save your life. So, um, but it is a nice touch on this knife. It makes this knife completely different from the other dagger knives that I have because I have two other dagger knives and. Uh, yeah, so the glass breaker is different. It's nice. They actually properly put the glass breaker on here correctly with the carbon carb carbide, excuse me, tungsten carbide tip, which is what I'm hoping that's what that is. I'm pretty sure it is. The blade being what it is of D2 steel, this is a big knife, all right? And I do want to say it's at four inches. <laughs> so that little bit right here, Obviously, I wouldn't choke up on it if I were you. Um, I feel the blade kind of touching the skin there, so I, uh, I I wouldn't really. I think that's more for sharpening purposes more than an actual choil that you can... I mean, you could if you wanted to, but I wouldn't. It just doesn't feel 100% safe right there. Yeah, assuming that you're not going to use your full finger. But it's nice. Jipping is in all the right places. Uh, the G10 is not overly textured and overly grippy, so that's really good. The pocket clip is nice and secure. Deep carry with the glass breaker is probably the only thing that's really going to be shown is the glass breaker and the pocket clip out of your pocket. If that doesn't bother you, then hey. Um, pivot seems nice. Centering seems great. Everything is great with this knife. I'm pretty sure it's nice and sharp. We can figure that out right now, why not? Assuming I can get to it. There we go. All right, paper. Show me how sharp you are. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Well, this is a hella shipe. A shipe. <laughs> hella sharp knife. Excuse me. Oh, man. I don't know what the heck's wrong with me today. I guess I'm still trying to wake up. I have a little problem with that. I guess I'm a little groggy, so... If you're looking for a knife that is got a little bit of a oriental kind of twist to it, and the name is just awesome, the Ronin. Oh yeah, that's what really caught my attention. I'm like the Ronin. Okay, uh, let me check that out. Now they have another one that's very much like this, same handle style, but different blade. I think it's called the uh, the Quager. <laughs> that's the. Uh, Dagger Quaker, I believe it is. It's like a Quaken styled blade. It's got that uh, really fat belly, and then it goes up to a really nice, acute point. Uh, almost kind of resembles the Osaraku Zakuri uh, Tanto that uh, I really do like. Of course, I went to look at that, and it was already sold out. So if I see it again, I might get it. But um, this is probably something I would more rather go for because uh, the thing about those kind of blade designs is that the it makes the tip just that much more uh, fragile because the tip is so fine at the very very top so you gotta really really watch out for stuff like that but other than that this is a great 
model right here, nice and light. It has a, you know, got a real, a, a lot of real estate on the handle. Feels good in the hand, both open and closed. If you were to use the glass breaker for whatever reason, you could still use it as an impact weapon, even if you don't break glass with it. It's still going to be great either way. So tacticality, yes. Tactical, yes. Very cool. I enjoy it without hitting tri tripod again and blinding you guys. Anyways. That's my review on the Dagger Knives Ronin. So, if you guys are interested in it, it doesn't break the bank. It's more of a budget kind of knife to me because of it being at a $67 price point. Why don't you pick one up if you can, if you're able, and if you're interested. It's a decent knife. I'm sure it'll do you good. It's if you're into big knives. It says this is a pretty decent size knife so <laughs> anyways go ahead and slash that like button stab that subscribe slice that bell icon so you guys are notified anytime that i post new stuff and in these troubled times everybody be kind be safe carry responsibly and i'll see you all awesome people in the next video